Hey there, you're watching Dirt Bike Channel. I'm your host, Kyle Brotherson, and today we're gonna be talking about the KTM Power Valve Puncture. Stick around. So if you have one of these 2019 or 2020 KTMs and you haven't had the power valve puncture yet, it's just a matter of time. I don't care, I don't care if you have radiator guards or not. You can have guards from Emperor Racing, Flow Motorsports, Boltproof Designs, Trail Tech, Unibiker, all of these guards, I've had so many messages from many, many people. Some people saying, well, you can't get this problem. You can't get this pinch. You, you, this problem won't happen if you have those guards. But I've also got messages from a lot of other people that I trust that say, hey, look, I still have this problem. Even though I had various radiator guards, you go down the list. So anyway, let me show you what happened out on the trail, how we fixed the power valve puncture out on the trail and continued riding not only that day, but the next day, and then what I've done here at the shop to get everything squared away and delete something on my bike. I deleted this nasty thing, and then I'm squared away and ready to go again. Okay, so we're up here in Wyoming, and we've got the TPI what do, what do we call what do we call this, call this the, design the power, flaw? The power valve puncture. The power valve puncture. So there's a way that this can be guarded, and I've just I just tipped over the bike, and we've we've put a hole in this radiator hose right here. Because what happens is the radiators get pushed back, and it pinches. You can see the pinch right there between the power valve and the elbow, and it cuts the hose. Sometimes it smashes the elbow, but luckily. That didn't happen. So I just noticed I had coolant coming out twice. And I'm like, what is going on? Well, Tyler's seen this. He's done it twice on his bike. So he's got some things over here that I need to get for mine. Might be kind of hard to see. But right back in there, he's got some extra guards. These are uh, these are like a plastic rubber. Tyler, what are they? Just, yeah, just a type of plastic. It's a type of plastic that just gives some extra protection between the hose you and, don't have that and this this power valve cover and it and it's all it's all created on the 19 and newer 250s and 300s because they lowered the radiator one inch and then they tilted the motor forward one degree and that brought those two points closer together because it, it's not really an issue on any of the other on models the older, the older generations so so the but if you have it happen out in the field you want to carry silicone tape and radiator hose clamps and we're going to wrap this up tight and clamp it and it should be fine for the rest of the day. So the cool part about riding with a guy like Tyler is I brought that bag over here with just my drone and I asked him, do you have the tools I need? Not only does he have the tools that I need, he's got silicone tape, he's got parts. If you ride with somebody that is prepared, I'm generally prepared, but I don't carry, I have the silicone tape at home, but I don't carry it in my pack. It's just because normal tapes, you could maybe do this with Gorilla Tape, but sometimes it doesn't stick and adhere to the rubber. This adheres to itself, and so you can use it for all kinds of stuff because you don't rely on glue, cool. you know, from a tape. Well, and then another thing that's beneficial is if you can ride with people that have the same bikes as you, then you can share parts too. That's another thing that is a real deal. So everybody here has... 2020 KTMs. Tyler is riding the XCW, the same bike that I'm on today. Garrett is on a 2020 XC, but a lot of the parts are shared. So the other thing I'm going to do to just lower the pressure on this, since we're having just foam silicone, is I changed my um, I changed my turn on temperature to 170 on this. Normally I have it 185, so it doesn't run too much, but I've turned my thermostat to come on at 170 just to possibly keep the pressure down on this silicone tape we're doing. So Tyler has wrapped this really well with that silicone tape. He, he put, you put like what, 18 inches on it? Yeah. Or so? Yeah. Um, wrapped it really, really well. And then you're going to put a hose clamp in the middle and we're not going to... I'm actually, I have two hose clamps. I'm probably going to put one on each side of the, the little cut right there. That way it will keep it from forcing itself out the sides, hopefully. Sweet. So we did one hose clamp and then a bunch of zip ties on top yeah. of the silicone tape, right, Tyler? Yeah, the, those are just to hold the end so the pressure doesn't force it out under the tape. But you just wrap it in silicone tape. Ideally, you'd have two clamps there, but we're gonna have to deal with zip ties. It'll work. But I think and with that and then the combination of lowering the temperature on the radiator, we're just gonna run it. We're gonna, I'm gonna watch yeah. it and see if it's leaking. 
but I don't think we're gonna go back to the truck. I think it's a trail hack. And then obviously when I get back, I'm gonna need to replace that radiator hose. And the and best thing to do is just get one off the 19 and do the delete kit. It. Uh, it's cheaper. Cheap. <sighs> Welcome back. So now we're back at the shop. The way that I actually have fixed this, so or at least prevented against this happening in the future, is I actually bought some of these hose guards from Clearwater Hydraulics. I just bought these on Amazon, and I can put a link down in the description. I just basically cut this guard in half, and then I have it zip tied here to the right behind the radiator hose. So it gives a little bit of added protection. This is, this is like a hard, um, flexible rubber plastic here. And that should give me a little bit more protection, a lot more protection against actually getting this hose pinched off again in the middle of a ride. Some guys are putting these big nasty radiator guards on their bikes, but again, I've already heard, even guys that have Emperor Racing radiator guards or Unibiker guards or Bulletproof Designs or Flow Motorsports or Trail Tech guards, they can still have this problem. So it's a problem that KTM needs to address because they dropped the radiators down, they rotated the, the cylinder forward and it brings these two points closer into contact so that when, when the bike tips over and this radiator, if it comes back, it can pinch that off. Since the hose that was in question was connected to the entire thermostat kit here on the bike, I decided to actually just delete the entire thermostat by using two parts from KTM. This is the part, and I'll put this in the description, but this is the part, the, just one radiator hose and another radiator hose. So for about, they're about six bucks a piece, you can delete the entire thermostat, which I did. And I know that there's gonna be some people saying, hey, you can't do that, but we've actually been testing this. Uh, Tyler, one of my buddies, has been testing this for the better part of a year. You don't actually need this in here, the thermostat. It's just, it's another thing that can possibly fail um, on the bike, and I didn't wanna spend the money replacing that, so I just, for 12 bucks, I have the hoses actually now where it's direct, and I've just cut out the thermostat. Yes, the bike, warms up maybe two or three degrees slower because we would test this bike that had the thermostat against his bike that didn't have the thermostat and we would watch the temperature gauges and yes this bike with the thermostat warmed up like two degrees faster i mean it was it was nothing it was no big deal so for just a couple of dollars for 12 bucks i was able to delete my thermostat if you wanted to go with a kit samco makes a kit here which is basically a, a samco radiator bypass hose kit these hoses are probably better uh, than the actual KTM hoses, which I just used, um, but this thing is about 80 or 90 bucks. So you can either delete your thermostat using like $12 here with the OEM parts, or you can use the Samco stuff for 80 or 90. I'll roll in those numbers here. I buy all this stuff from Rocky Mountain ATV, um, just so that you know. I think that's what I've got for you guys. Remember, if you wanna support our bike channel, one of the best ways you can do it is by using the links down below in the description. You could also go to my website, dirtbikechannel.com. Up in the upper right hand corner, I have links up there. There's links to Rocky Mountain ATV, Motorsport, Amazon. Those links help to go back into the channel, help to support my family. Also keep in mind that this bike here, the 2020 300 XCW TPI, is going to be a sweepstakes bike later this year. I'm shooting for October 15th through December 15th. I'm also gonna be giving away that bike over there. It's the KTM 250, it's 2020 250 XC TPI and a Sherco 300 SEF factory. That's a lot of like numbers, but that's what we're doing. So stay tuned for that. I think that's what I have for you. So it was a pretty cool uh, trail hack. And now this bike is all backed up and ready to go. Better than new, I think, where it doesn't have the uh, radiator, or I mean the uh, thermostat on there. And we are all good to go. Thanks so much, guys. And let's leave a single track.